Ladies and gentlemen, today we are reporting a media commentary live from the penitentiary in Ham, Germany, with an incredible story. Milita lives with her parents near Meschede, has seven siblings, and attends the fourth grade at the local elementary school in Eslo Reiste, Germany. Her teachers praise her regularly for her noticeably positive behavior. Upon being confronted with sexual education at her school, Milita M leaves the classroom because she was uncomfortable with the topic. That her behavior was understandable can be seen with the recent happenings in Borken, Germany, where on June 27, 2013, eight sixth graders collapsed upon being shown pictures of genitalia. Milita was finally, after a conversation with the school leaders, forcefully pulled into the classroom and because of her defiance had to spend the rest of the period in the teacher's room. Considering the fact that German schools offer alternative classes for unreligious children, and many schools even offer Islamic studies for Muslim students, all the same in the name of tolerance, this intolerant approach, which is ordered by law, is not understandable. Worse, because the period in the teacher's room and a further period of sexual education were officially reported to school officials as missed classes, public authorities had to intervene. The notification of a fine, which was refused by Melita's parents, was followed by a court charge, then a visit from the court-martial, and finally the forwarding to the regional appeal of court, where the parents were not permitted to defend themselves. After a further final notice to pay, Milita's father, Eugen M., was notified that he, as well as his wife, Luisa, were each sentenced to one day of jail time and were to report to the responsible correctional facility on their own. Since Eugen M. was convinced of his innocence, he refused to participate and was taken into custody and put in jail. His pregnant wife, Luisa, received the same sentence, and we are waiting to see how officials are going going to act concerning her pregnancy. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, waiting in front of a jail, not to receive a murderer or rapist, but Eugen M., a father who is worried about the good care of his children and is even ready to go to jail for it. Sadly, we are not talking about a singular case, because there have recently been numerous parents taken into custody for wanting to keep their children from such classes. Already in 2010, COP publishers reported several cases in which mothers and fathers were jailed for weeks for not sending their children to sexual ed class. The mass media failed to report these hair-raising cases, which should force us even more into the responsibility to tell the general public of this drawback. If we do not finally stop stamping off caring parents as immature and taking away their rights to decide over their children, then we shouldn't be surprised when the falling birth rate speeds up and large families which provide the backbone for a healthy nation leave our country. That would be the end of us. We now hope to get in a few questions with Eugen M. after he is released. How long will politics keep silent in view of this scandal? We need love and not sex. We need love instead of mandatory education. You're participating in this demonstration today. What do you think about the sentence? Well. I find it interesting that a father is sentenced who takes his child out of a lesson where pornographic material is dealt with. On the other hand, there are laws which protect children when they come in contact with pornographic material. That is punishable, and now the father protecting his child is imprisoned. This is absurd. Well, I would like to know who does such things. I want to know what judge gives such a sentence. I want to know what sort of judge is that. What is he doing? What is he up to? Because something's not right in the system. That's why I'm standing here. Yes, I simply want to show my solidarity with the parents, because I know, I've talked to many children, they really suffer from this. It's mainly the elementary school children. From pornographic sex education. You can't describe it any way else. I've also seen other material, it's porn education, and the children suffer and they're overburdened with that, and they don't dare speak up in school in that direction. 
They're forced. A child told me everything is so horrible and the suffering was literally written in her face. And she says the worst part is that we have to learn all these things by heart. And the children don't dare under this pressure say anything and most of them don't even dare mention anything at home. But at some point the parents, if they are attentive, they notice that their children have changed, and then it sometimes only comes to light by coincidence what's going on in sex ed class at school. One father once literally stated to a large Cologne newspaper, what's going on here is poor in education, and we will stand up against this. And that's why I'm here, because I fully stand behind it, and it has to stop. It has to stop, and we'll protest until it stops. You've just been released from jail. May I ask you some questions? Yes, of course. How do you feel now since you've just been released? Well, certainly freer. It's sort of an awkward feeling to be taken into custody for something you're not guilty of in any way. And you're simply depraved of your freedom that is everyone's due. And it's actually one of the most important things in human life. And then you're simply taken into custody because of two missed classes of my daughter in sex ed, because my daughter simply couldn't cope with that. How did your daughter have the courage to leave the class? Well, for us as a family, it's always been clear that this development which is going on in schools, in the entire school system, regarding sex education can't work out. And we could never get used to it. And that's why from the beginning it was clear that our daughter can decide according to her own feeling. And we encouraged her to stand firm when she feels that she doesn't feel good about it. And we supported her that she even was allowed to leave the room. You spent one entire night in prison. Was the sacrifice worth it for you? In any case, in any case, even just because of this interview with you and the following publication of this story, it was worth it. Yes, and it simply has to go public. It has to have people know what's going on. That's why it was worth it in any case. According to your opinion, what should change now? The teachers, the school administration, or what's your view? Well, the teachers in most cases have little to say. It's more about the school system, which pushes through and implements early sexualization in such a determined way. Endangering our children enormously. You just mentioned early sexual education. How great now is the danger of early sex ed? You could mention now at this point many examples. Let's just take this incident where eight children of the town of Borken collapsed from the sex ed class and six of them had to go to the hospital. And worse even yet, the example of the two 13-year-old boys, where one had raped a five-year-old girl, and the other held tight the girl's seven-year-old brother and forced him to watch it. What moves these children to do such a thing? 
The children nowadays are confronted with brutal pornography via mobile phones and unhindered internet access. And on the other hand, it is, it's the schools itself. With the early sex education, they're destroyed from within. The psyche of a child is disrupted, and with that, they are destroyed. What do you advise parents now, who may be in a similar situation as you are? Well, I advise you at any rate. Don't look away. Make the problem your concern and ensure that this story or this incident, for instance, and other incidents, or whatever happens in this regard, that it's made public, and that your friends hear about it, and they tell their friends, who tell their friends. In my opinion, it's the one and only way and the strongest way to publish this nuisance and make it known to the people. At this point, I give thanks on behalf of my children for anyone who takes a stand for this issue and becomes active in this matter. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, and thank you too for this interview. Stop early sexual education at elementary schools. Forced sexualization is parental discrimination. Dear viewers, did this media commentary touch you? Does it hurt you to see that the mass media doesn't say anything uh, anything about this? Then make sure that this doesn't get swept under the rug. And inform your neighbors, inform your friends. More topics about this is on www.klagemauer.tv. We wish you a good evening.